debut last June and now the setting for a most significant match as the story of the 1990-1991 Italian season draws close to its conclusion. Inter two points behind Sampdoria, second in the table, but they don't think of the consequences of failure here against Fiorentina. Fiorentina have found this season somewhat difficult. Roberto Baggio was their inspiration and his transfer to Juventus hit hard at their self-belief. But they acquired Diego Fuse from Milan, that's helped lift the spirits again. And Salvatore and Borgonovo have both returned also from Milan and gradually fears of relegation here have receded. Inter, as you'd expect, bristling with international talent from here in Italy, of course, plus their three totally committed West Germans. Andy Bremer, who passed a fitness test yesterday, Jürgen Klinsmann and the marvellous Lothar Matthäus. And eight of today's 11 have responded to these particular pressures successfully before. Two years ago, when Inter stormed their way to the championship, 11 points clear at the top at the end, and I think they'll need to call on all that experience again this afternoon. And here come the teams. To an excellent reception. The ground is jam-packed. And there's almost a carnival atmosphere amongst the Fiorentina supporters. Fiorentina kick off this an afternoon of immense importance for Inter. Beaten only four times in the championship this season. They've lost only one of their last 15. But they are still trailing to Sampdoria. And although the two top clubs still have to meet in the famous San Siro Stadium in a couple of weeks' time, that meeting won't be quite so uh, high-pressured if Inter don't do their job today. It will uh, effectively be over if Fiorentina win this one and Sampdoria pick up two points as you'd expect them to do at home to Bari. Here's Bianchi. No real surprises in the Inter lineup. Giovanni Trapattoni with a full squad to choose from. Excellent playing conditions. Defied the odds there. Can he earn to corner? Cruzair guarding the post. Malushi trying to watch Klinsman. Oh, the goalkeeper not certain by any means. Just poured it away, but the contact took it beyond any of the players coming in on the far side from where the corner was taken. Borganova, skillfully down for Orlando. Fuse up with him. And Fiorentina springing forward now. Salvatore on the right of Fuse. Well, it carried... 
it's a menace on the counter-attack. And that's what Inter are afraid of if they overcommit in the uh, relatively early stages of the match. Pagani. Here's Orlando. Bergame. Bremer. Half time approaching, it's Fiorentina nil, into nil. And Serena claiming that he'd been pushed in the back by Kim. Di Chiara. Now Kubik, Di Chiara, who uh, used to play further forward on the left-hand side, trying to link up with Borganova and Kubik. Bertie. And every Fiorentina player who dispossesses Nicola Berti is getting special applause from the home fans. Bergami. And the booze once more for Berti, but he kept into going that time. This is Bianchi. Buzer and Kubik doing their best to prevent him making any special progress, but in to have the throw, taken by Bremer, met by Dunga defensively, and then Facenda, and now Orlando. And Bremer just trying to clip his heels, I think, but Orlando kept his balance, kept the ball, switched the point of attack to Di Chiara. That's a useful cross too. And Fuser was given time to fashion the shot, but didn't trouble Zenga. Excellent work by uh, Orlando in the first place, and then Di Chiara. Not quite so much excellence in the shot from Diego Fuser. Fuser with seven goals, joint top scorer for Fiorentina with Orlando. histrionic character and wanted to get involved there
Lucky not to be sent off in the Milan derby a few weeks ago when he chased the referee and laid hands on the official after being beaten by the goal that turned out to be the winner from Marco Van Basten. And Kubik couldn't come up with the right sort of free kick for Fiorentina. And uh, Lubos Kubik can do much better than this. You might remember a wonderful goal he scored uh, in the uh, pre-World Cup friendly at Wembley against England when he curled a free kick past uh, David Seaman. 30. Bianchi going in. Borgonovo. It's a real test of Inter's appetite, their nerve. They are a side that are physically strong. They rely a lot on power, on athletic approach. Fiorentina once or twice have put together some fine football and given the impression in what we've seen so far that they're capable of stopping into winning today. And that really is the significance of the match. For all Fiorentina's need for a couple of extra points perhaps at the bottom of the table. Their need is not at all as pressing as Inter's is. Mateus, Klinsman. Run back by Dunga. Here's Salvatore. Like Fruzer and Borgonovo, a player with a, an AC Milan connection. Always puts a spring in the step for them when they face Inter. Borgonovo and Fruzer. And Dikiara sold short by the pass. He still goes chasing, and the Paganin put in trouble by Bianchi. Inter in a tight corner at the moment, and it's gone across the line. All credit to Fiorentina. They haven't allowed Inter to settle at all. And the home supporters are enjoying this. Dunga. Here's Pin, who came back into the side with Pioli suspended. For a free kick given against Kubik. Lubos Kubik, the Czechoslovakian, who uh, had a spell training with Derby County, but couldn't get the right clearance to have a career in England. The uh, connection, of course, Czechoslovakian with uh, the owner of Derby County, Robert Maxwell. Cross from Malushi. Very nearly uh, got through to Borgonovo and <laughs> didn't really have any right to do that. Pagani. Inter are effective when Bremer gets down the left-hand side. He's such an accurate supplier from the left. But forced in field then, which lessens his value. Fuzo. Fiorentina's problems. Borgonovo is the only really out and out striker in this selection with Lakatush still injured. And if they can't find him, they're not really going to open up into too often. But it's been quite a frenetic first half. Fiorentina have come up with uh, some clever play in midfield. 
play that's been very easy on the eye with the likes of Kubik and Orlando. And Inter have had their defensive troubles. The latest of which brings a yellow card for deliberate handball for Bergami. And it gives a free kick, again in a position in which the left-sided players will fancy their chances. And this is closer than Kubik's previous attempt, if indeed it is to be him. And what a way this would be to uh, end the first half. Bergami is panicking them. Cruiser close to the ball as well. Certainly within Kubik's capabilities. To at least come close here. He's having a good look. Here he goes! and Zenga will have you believe that he had that covered all the way just the spin was carrying it further wide stoppage time, a referee Coppatelli brings the first half to a close and it certainly hasn't been plain sailing for Inter for whom two points are imperative here Fiorentina have been skillful in midfield not too sharp up front but the free kicks have caused some problems and we haven't seen a great deal of Inter in attack at half time in Florence it's Fiorentina nil, Inter nil Still here in Florence. And certainly Fiorentina enjoying the occasion in playing a part in the championship race. And Sergio Coppatelli may well lose patience with Nicola Berti for yet another dive into the Fiorentina penalty area. Here's Bremer, there's no way back to the goalkeeper. That was well done under pressure by Mateus. They really will need him to show perhaps a greater influence than we saw in the first half. badistini has got forward well. Oh, and that's obstruction, it seemed. At the very least. But possibly with Bertie looking to deceive so often that when an, another player goes down more genuinely, Badistini in this case, there's going to be no refereeing sympathy. And that to me looked like a pin just moving across the line of Badistini. What the professionals will call uh, blocking off the run. And he did it in such a professional way that he got away with it. No concessions coming into his way so far. Except in terms of Fiorentina's sportsmanship in throwing the ball back after Inter had put it out so that uh, Battistini could get some treatment. Prema. It's another free kick to Fiorentina. And Finn, the player who was involved in that latest, to shout for a penalty. The free kick has been given against Serena for going into that challenge with a foot raised. And regular viewers of uh, the Italian First Division will know that you only have to slightly show the studs and an Italian referee 
who will give a free kick. Referees, incidentally, that will be professionals next season. Innovative move by the Italian authorities, not universally applauded around the football world. Oh, pin's OK. careful in terms of steps for the ball under his control having dropped it then and he was aware of that and wanted Bergamy to come and make absolutely sure that there was no risk of a free kick being conceded Ferry Bergamy Inter have offered so much to this Italian season with the quality of their work They might yet end up with the UEFA Cup. But really, they want the championship. And what happens over the remainder of this match will play a great part as to whether that ambition can continue meaningfully beyond this afternoon. Bianchi has done well. He needs a good cross, and he's found it to Bertie. By far the best chance for Inter so far, coming in the eighth minute of the second half, expertly created by Alessandro Bianchi, who drew players towards him and allowed Bertie to come in unattended here. He gets into these positions well from midfield, but he normally finishes better than that. But it's given some extra zip to Inter. And Bianchi in particular, who's forced a corner. This is the sort of attitude that Trapattoni would have expected from his players, but it's been a little late on view. Cristini, Serena and Bertie and Klinsmann going for it. Klinsmann seemed to get to it, but couldn't deflect it. Back from Bremer. Oh, the goalkeeper came, didn't get there. It's going to be off the line, is it? Well, eventually, from Serena, it was very nearly a classic case of too many cooks spoiling the broth. They had two players to deal with it, and I'm not sure that that ball didn't cross the line. Fuzer. Back to him from Salvatore. Orlando. It's Inter's free kick, but the ground in absolute hubbub here. A mistake by the goalkeeper, Maragini. And a header towards goal by Serena. There. Dunga and Pin left it to each other. Well, the linesman was the key official and he kept his flag down. Belatedly hooked away by Pin and Serena was sure he'd scored. And Inter really have redoubled their efforts in the second half and here they come again. Klinsman, Bertie, Badistini, whistle's gone, free kick to Fiorentina. It's by far Inter's most effective spell. And uh, they were bursting in again, Bertie in particular, and it was a foul. That's Beppe Varese warming up for Inter in his 14th season with the club. Pure coincidence, but he's wearing number 14. It's 
So Baristini punished for his uh, retaliation after the free kick had been given to Inter. To be served up here by Andy Bremer. Managini attracted to the ball. Patting it away. Oh, and uh, Di Chiara. I can't believe that the uh, Leisman's awarded it against Fiorentina. Bianchi. Serena might get to this. Oh, Malushi. It wasn't Serena in the end uh, who wrapped his foot around it, but the chance very nearly came to Klinsman, who was quick to applaud the uh, persistence of Inter. Bianchi, who's only scored a couple of times this season, but they've both been very spectacular from uh, the edge of the penalty area. And you start to wonder now whether Fiorentina will fold under this Inter onslaught. Forza Inter on the scarves there. The travelling band who've come south. Well, is it going to be touched off here for a Mateus special? Bremer has the ball at his feet. Here comes Mateus! Well, they got it wide enough to give him a sight of goal, and everyone here recognises how close that was. He's obliged so often in these positions. It was a super try. Kubik. Uh, a little bit of basketball thrown in. Inter must keep the roll going. They picked up the momentum. They've got to sustain it. Teddy. Well, that's not the way to do it. That is in his header, Kubik. Another of those thoughtful touches in midfield. Orlando hasn't got too much weight to throw around against these strong uh, inter midfield players. Dunga thought about the shot, had a second thought about it as well, and still delivered it. And it swerved and it troubles Zenga. The ability of a Brazilian to impart the bend on to the ball Shown up again. Dunga now has to try and make a tackle on uh, Serena, who wheeled away from him. Very forward to Berti by Bremer. And uh, let's have a look at Dunga's shot. Where Dunga himself was being penalised for, I think, a bit of handball there as he turned and slipped and made contact. And Bertie, who's very strong, let's just see, now he got his foot to it. It wasn't for the use of the hand, it was for an unfair tackle. So a decision that Fiorentina aren't best pleased with. Bremer to take the free kick. Great chance here for Inter. And complaints now that there was some pushing and shoving by Fiorentina. Serena again, who's always the one most likely to get his head to the ball in these situations. 
And I wonder whether the push that he felt in the end came from Bergami, who was coming in behind him, a teammate. Well, maybe it was in the interway of thinking here to get through the first half unscathed. But it doesn't leave them so much time to impose their will on the game. They're playing expertly now. But there are 24 minutes left and it's still nil-nil. Every time the ball goes up in the air near Aldo Serena. Serena is being penalised. Sometimes they have been fouls. But I must say I have a lot of sympathy with Serena on the other occasions. A referee who is approaching his task here in a very fussy way. We've hardly seen Fiorentina in attack in the second half. Fuzer to take the free kick. Trafatoni wants to get Barese on. He's basically a defender. Maybe he wants to free Bremer. Fuzer's cross. Fiorentina not for the first time short of numbers in the centre. Bremer. Bertie. It's Bianchi. Oh, he's knocked it too far ahead, has he? Di Chiara got a sight of the ball, but Bianchi was quick enough to make up the ground. He certainly played his part in the second half improvement. But it really has been a collective effort. And if they were to score, well, Fiorentina could have no complaints. Their point is very much in the balance at the moment. After the first half in which they played some attractive football in midfield. And here is Pepe Barese. Made his debut back in 1977. But Bremer, who has been injured, and as I said earlier, was doubtful for this match. They felt he made a very good recovery. But they'll miss him in the service that he gives on the left-hand side. But what Trapattoni has on the field in Beppo Varese is a player who really has blue and black blood in his veins he's given all his working life to this one club and Fiorentina now will be thinking of replacing Di Chiara and this is Volpecina who won a championship with Napoli back in 1987 very much uh, a like for like in the uh, change Di Chiara came off worse when he was really the guilty party though the game will restart with Inter's free kick again entrusted to Mateus Kubik got his head to it for Fiorentina and the booze yet again for Bertie it's been a cacophony every time he's touched the ball Still plenty of time for him to have the last laugh, though. Most of the fans here would be absolutely thrilled if Bertie got himself sent off. Orlando. Borgovo. Stopped unfairly by Ferry. And this may be the best opportunity. Well, the referee has said that Borgonovo died so it's not an opportunity for Kubik it's an opportunity for Inter to restart the game quickly 
So a measure of consistency there from Sergio Coppatelli.